Okay, now that we have all our configurations done, what we want to do next is we want to prepare this machine so that it can be cloned or an image made of it. Now, one of the main things to take into account here is that when you build a server, whether it be virtual or physical, and you name it, not alone do you have a name that is readable by human beings, but also internally, the name of the computer is associated with unique IDs. So if we were to clone this machine as it stands, we would end up with two servers. And even if we rename the second one, the internal IDs would be the same, which would cause a lot of networking problems. So Microsoft have provided us with a partial solution to this, and that is to be able to strip out all of the IDs from the virtual machine, from the virtual or physical operating system. To do that, we go to our C drive, Windows. We go down to our System32 directory. In System32, we go down to what's called SysPrep. And when we go to SysPrep, we have a little application in here, which will do the stripping out for us. We are going to leave it as out-of-box experience, which basically is like it was when it was given to you the first time. We are going to shut down this machine when we're finished. And we are going to generalize. The generalized portion is actually what strips out all the IDs. So basically, we are going to strip out all the unique IDs out of this machine. We are going to shut down the machine. We will not be restarting it, because if we restart it, we're going to a mini install again. But once we've shut it down, we will then be able to use a feature within VirtualBox called cloning. So we will actually be able to use this feature called clone. So out of box experience, generalize, shut down. We click OK. You'll see a screen popping up, processing the, the cleanup phase. And basically, we let that run there for a while. And when it's finished, the machine will automatically shut down. This may actually take a few minutes or a few seconds. We can see now that the machine is automatically shutting down and it says powered off. This means that this machine has now been reconfigured to have no unique IDs and no names, etc. Now, within VirtualBox, to save us the bother of creating new virtual machines and running through the configuration and the installation, the startup, the passwords, and then all the other configurations that we did within the virtual machine, we should now be able to simply go along and clone a virtual machine. When we go to clone a virtual machine, we get some questions. One of these questions is, what do we want to call the clone? In this case, I'm going to call this one Server1. And remember, this name is purely and simply the name as displayed in VirtualBox. I'm going to store it in its own directory, in the same directory as have the other files. I'm going to make a full clone of it. And basically, the main thing we need to change here is we are going to generate new MAC addresses. Remember, the MAC address is a network address. So we want new network addresses for each virtual machine that we have. Otherwise, they would not be able to communicate on a network. That's about it. That's about all we need to do. So we click Clone. And similar to when we sysprepped, we basically end up with a waiting time for the clone to finish. Again, this may take from a few minutes to several minutes, depending on the performance of your system. Once we have the first machine cloned, we are simply going to clone a second machine. And we'll call the second one Server 2. It says here it's going to take 55 minutes. However, it generally does not take anything near that. A couple of minutes should be quite sufficient. While we're waiting for this, you might wonder why we have a picture of a sheep. This presumably is because the first sheep that was cloned, the first animal that was cloned, Dolly the sheep, was the first complete clone of an existing animal by itself. So we can just take that as being a good story. And once the machine is cloned, we can see over here we've got server one powered off. We're going to do the exact same again with base server so that we have two clone machines. We're going to clone it. We're going to call this one for the moment server two. Location, it will create a directory called server two. And we're doing a full clone. And again, we are including the option to generate new MAC addresses for each of the virtual machines. Click on clone. And I think the last one took about four minutes, three minutes to do. So it's not that long to actually make it work. While we're looking at that, we can also look as to where we actually create those machines. So if you remember, 
we are storing the machines by default in the VirtualBox VMs folder. And you can see here, if we sort it by date, we can see here there is a server one, and now we've got a server two, today's date. And if we look at server one, we can see that we have the server one VDI file, nine gig. And if we go back to our original box, our base server, we can see that it's also nine gig. And if we go to our server two, we can see that it's building. We can see it increasing in size here. Now if we refresh it, so when that gets up to about nine gig, we will see that we'll have a second clone built. In the meantime, we'll just wait a few minutes and let's see how long that takes. Now that it's completed, we can see that we have our base server, which we will not be turning on. We've got server one and server two being clone machines. So let's see what happens when we start a clone machine. Because remember, it's based on a machine that was sysprepped or had its, a, its initial IDs, etc. removed. So if we start up server one, we'll find it starts up normally as all servers start up. However, we'll also find that we are running a mini install and we're going to be prompted for a few questions. So it starts up as normal. You can see that we have it getting devices ready, getting ready itself. And eventually it will pop up with a series of questions that we need to answer as though it was a new install. Okay, in this case, it's actually done its detection and now it's restarting. So it takes a few minutes for it to restart up with the questions. Here we go. And now we have our first questions. Country of region, application language, and keyboard layout. And you can see it's actually picked it up from the settings we had on the original machine, the base server. Click next on that. Get your license agreement. Click accept on that. And we're back into our passwords. So again, we will go with the same password that we used before. So this is a separate local administrator for this image, server one. Now if you can't remember the password, this was the password that we used before. Cancel that and minimize. Finish on that. And basically we have a new machine. We get our login and we log in with our keyboard. Put in our password. And we should now have a new machine. And let's just look and see what it has remained and what is new compared to our base server. So we wait for our network detection. We take a yes on that. And once we've done that, it should load up our server manager first. You can see the graphics display updating itself. And eventually then our server manager will load up. And again, the, the response times are all back down to the performance of your, your disks, the performance of your processor, and the amount of memory that you have to play around with. So we're back into our server manager screen. Click on local server. It may take a couple of seconds to bring that screen up. And when local server loads up, we will then compare as to what we had on base server. Okay, and as we can see, the computer name has been renamed because it's a clone, we need to give it its own name. However, if we look here at this other settings like the remote desktop, that is enabled. We're still using IPv4. Our IE Enhanced is turned off and our Windows updates needs to be configured because it's a new machine, so we can turn on automatic updates there in the background. But all the other settings that we have, including, for example, if we had Windows updates installed on the machine, we would have that. So we're going to rename this and we're going to change the name of this to server one to match what we have in our virtual box. And it is also going to be a member of a work group. And when we've done that, it will be told about restarting our computer. And in fact, we can now restart that. As that is restarting in the background, I'm going to load up server two. And of course, the fact that we're 
shutting down and restarting two boxes simultaneously will should slow down performance of the machine because of the amount of activity on the hard drive. So we let that one shut down in the background, and this one is starting up in the foreground. And you can see now that we have server one is restarting itself, and server two is starting up for the first time. Remember, server two needs to be configured, whereas server one already has its configuration because we've just done that. Server one or server two is getting its devices ready. So like we saw a few minutes ago, it may shut down and restart. And server one is ready to log on. So we we'll, in the meantime we will log on. Run keyboard. We will log on to our server one with our password that we used. And of course the only difference we have in here is server one basically now has a computer name of server one. Server 2 is restarting in the background after its initial configuration, so that will load up and give us our little menus to go to. So we are on server 1, and basically when server manager opens up here, we should see that it's now named server 1. This one is going to start up a mini install, and we will have to run through the configuration of that one. And as I mentioned, two machines starting up simultaneously on a local PC can be quite intensive, so give yourself time for this to work. So we can now see that Server 1 has started itself up. We've logged on. We can see it's now called Server 1. It's in a work group, and everything else that we configured on it is existing there. So Server 1 can sit there in the background while we wait for Server 2 to finish its initial configuration. Now we have the same menu items again. It's picked up our initial settings. Once we go through that, it will then ask us to accept our agreement, etc. And new password for this machine. And we should then have to just rename the computer. So here's our password again, same password. And we finish that. And we should have our server manager loading up. And once that loads up, we know we have to rename the computer, and here we go, logging on. And PA55W.RD. <coughs> so we wait for server manager to load up, initial profile being created. And at this stage, when we rename the computer and restart it, we would end up with two live machines that we can now use for our exercises. And we still have, <coughs> we still have our base server that we can clone at any stage. So we accept the network connection, and we will that close and server manager open up. You can see it's detecting the graphics, etc. So we have logged on. Our server manager is opened up on server 2. We click on local server and we can see, yet again, we need to rename this computer. We go on computer name, change, we call this server 2. And we leave it in the work group. And it'll take a few seconds and then ask us to restart. Close that. Just restart later at the moment. If we scroll across, we can see everything is configured with the exception of automatic updates. So we'll turn on automatic updates. Again, as I said, do this in the background when you're not actually working on the machines. Just let them run the background, download and install the updates and bring it up to date. We close that and we have everything configured here. So as we've seen, everything will change except for the computer name. So we need to shut down or sign out. So we're going to restart the computer. Click continue and the computer will shut down. So in our next video, we will look at communicating between the two machines that have been generated.